Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, today is another miserably rainy day here in Western North Carolina. As you can see, it is wet. It's been raining since, uh, probably since about six o'clock last night. And it's about, what, noon today, I guess. So uh, today we are in the shop and we are working on the Sportster. Now, you guys remember Prison Preacher, uh, that Road King we did the LA Choppers bars on just the other day? This is his wife's motorcycle. So the reasons today that it is in the shop is it needs a 20,000 mile service done on it. Also, as you can see here, it was missing a muffler. So he's got a whole new exhaust system to put on it. Well, slip-ons anyways, it's not the full system. Uh, so 20,000 mile service exhaust. Oh, handlebars need some adjustment. Um, the bars themselves are okay, but the levers and the switch housings are rolled back in an awkward position and the big problem was right here we had a leak on the rear rocker cover box so as you can see i've got it partially disassembled but you can see here where the oil was leaking down you can see the puddles down here and of course everything down in this area is wet and yucky because this bottom rocker box gasket has failed yeah as you can see i started without you um but basically remove the tank which is just the two bolts the fuel line and there's one little vacuum hose that's back here and I just kind of tuck that stuff out of the way. This wire harness, it runs alongside. So I, uh, I cut the factory zip tie so I can roll it up and then put these zip ties on just so it's not hanging down in my workspace. I have also removed the battery because working in this area here, the positive battery terminal is right there. There's a good chance of accidental arcing. So we want to avoid that whenever possible. Here's the top rocker box cover. And as you can see, there's just four bolt holes that hold that down. And that holds it down to this middle spacer plate. And then that middle spacer plate will then sit on the lower rocker box plate. Now, in order to remove the lower rocker box plate, um, you pretty much have to remove the rocker shafts as well. So um, as I loosen this up at this point, I am going to do it in stages so it doesn't load it crooked because I actually have seen these things break and crack if they're done improperly. But another thing I did is I put this rear cylinder on top dead center compression only because then the springs aren't compressed as far. There's, you're not going to feel like a, a, a slack in it like you would with a screw and lug nut set up or anything like that because this does have hydraulic lifters. So there's still going to be pressure on the push rods to the rocker shafts. But as long as it's on top dead center, the cam is on the base circle, the valves are in their seats you're not gonna be fighting the spring pressure, at least when you're loosening this or reinstalling it. You're gonna lower the risk of doing some kind of a damage. I guess on a sports store or actually any Harley, the easiest way to find that top dead center is to jack the bike up, get the rear wheel off the ground, put the bike in the highest gear possible, remove the spark plug so you're not fighting compression, and then just rotate the rear wheel and you'll actually get that engine to turn. Now make sure you rotate the wheel in the direction of normal operation as if you're going forward down the road. You never wanna back an engine up. However, um, at this point, because you've removed the spark plugs, the only force you're fighting in there is just the spring pressure itself as that cam rotates and pushes down on those valves. Uh, but that way you don't have to worry about trying to pull off covers and so on and so forth in order to get a wrench on there. That's just the fastest, easiest way to do it. Now, at this point, there are seven bolts with the half inch uh, head that we have to take off. And there's also these two Allen bolts that just hold down at the corners. One right there. So I have that one right there removed and working on this one here. Because of the proximity of the frame right above it, I have to use this little... 3 16 Allen that I've previously cut shorter for clearance. All right, guys, right here, I have to make a correction. Earlier, I said there were the seven half-inch head bolts that hold this lower rocker box assembly on, and I was incorrect on that. There are four of the half-inch head bolts that actually hold the rocker shaft assembly portion of it down, and then there are three 7 16 head bolts that actually hold the base of that down. Let me show you a little bit closer. So as you come in here, this one, this one, and then the two on the other side, see right there and right there are the four half inch and they really hold the rocker shafts down. Then you've got this one here, this one down here, and this one here that are seven sixteenths and they are really just there to keep uniformity uh, for the gasket surface 
underneath. They don't really hold any tension or rocker shaft support. So those three we can take out. The four main ones, the ones we gotta be careful with not to uh, let them tweak or torque uh, in any kind of crooked manner to not break anything. All right, guys, now that all the bolts are out, you should just be able to pick this up and weasel it out of here. And I guess maybe we should just pull the push rods out first. All right, there's the push rod for the intake. And the push rod for the exhaust. Notice the exhaust has got the stripes on it. And actually the intake does as well. It's got a single stripe. The exhaust has three stripes. And now we should be able to raise this up and wiggle it out. Sometimes it takes a little finagling to get it right. Look, I can feel the broken parts of the gasket under my fans. And there we go. All right, and there we go. So that's what she looks like with the rocker boxes completely off. All right, so here's your intake valve and your spring and the retainers. And here on the exhaust side, you can see some of that gasket material hanging out there where it's brittle and had been breached. That's where the oil leak was coming from. Guys, and over here on the bench. Now this is with the rocker box upside down. Again here, you can see the breach in the gaskets here on the gasket surface. And here, it's all good all the way around here. This side over here where the push rods were, it was intact. Right there is where the leak was coming from. All right guys, so now I've got to clean up these gasket surfaces, uh, wash all my parts, and make sure that there's no more of that gasket material that fell down in around that uh, the valve pocket. I don't want any debris to stay inside the engine, so I'll do a really good job of cleaning that out. All right, guys, so I have got all the gasket surfaces clean, both on top of the head and all the rocker box assemblies. As I was opening up the box to uh, get out the new gaskets, now what I bought here was the complete top end kit. And no, there's a lot of stuff in here that we don't really need because we're only replacing a couple of gaskets here, but this has got cylinder base gaskets, it's got uh, a lot of the O-rings, the little umbrella seals, it's got the uh, head gaskets, the whole nine yards. And we just don't need all that. But one thing I want to make note is, if you looked at the gaskets that I took off of there, you know, I had to scrape them off of that rocker box base, uh, they were two individual gaskets. And the new one that comes in the OEM Harley kit is one gasket, and it's a metal gasket, a much better quality than what was on here. And I don't know if what was here was factory, maybe they just updated it or or what. This is the first time I've ever worked on this motorcycle, so I do not know the history, but that was very well could have been a lower quality aftermarket gasket. And they were super brittle. Um, whether it was because of quality or maybe the bike had been overheated before, I don't know. Nice thing is we've got a lot of extra gaskets here. So if this customer ends up having an issue with the front cylinder head later on and those rocker boxes leaking, we'll have the stuff here to fix it without having to order any additional parts. So now we're gonna get this all back together and uh, get this thing running again. All right guys, as you can see there, I got everything lined up and I have all of the bolts started and hand tight. I haven't put an actual wrench on any of them. They're just down hand tight. In fact, I can still wiggle the rocker box around a little bit here. Um, I do that because one, I wanna make sure that all of the bolt holes align properly through that gasket. And I'm taking very careful note to make sure that the gasket is in its proper place. It's not sticking out someplace where it may have shifted. If every bolt goes through and everything uh, is, is free, it should line up exactly right. So uh, I'm looking up the torque specs on everything right now because we're going to get torque it down. All right, guys, so now we're going to break out the torque wrench 
torque wrenches, I should say. We've got two different ones we're gonna use here so that uh, we can get these properly torqued down. So for the four larger bolts, it actually held down the rocker shaft area of the lower box cover. So they're gonna get the most torque. The torque spec for those four bolts should be between 15 and 18 foot pounds. And then the 7 16 bolts, those need to be torqued to 10 to 13 foot pounds. And at that point, we can then put the, the middle plate in and then the top rocker box assembly. And the final four bolts that hold the whole top part together are gonna get torqued between 90 and 120 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. So that's where we're gonna break out two torque wrenches. We've got the foot pound torque wrench and I've got an inch pound torque wrench that we'll use here in just a moment. Okay guys, I got all that torque done and in place. You know, I planned on recording all that, but just as I was getting ready to, Zach had walked into the shop and started asking me a couple questions. So while I was working, him and I were having a short conversation and I completely forgot to pull the phone out. And even when he walked out, I just continued torquing everything. But I mean, torque wrenches are right here. I, I could pretend to retorque it for you, but, uh, but you know, here's the little inch pound wrench, teeny tiny little thing. And then I've got the half inch drive for the foot pound wrench. So anyway, that is done. So before I put the middle plate on, you'll see it's got these little rubber caps in here. And these are actually for the breather system. And I'll show you real quick how that works. So when an engine is running and all the internal parts are rotating, you can create a pressure inside the engine. And if that pressure doesn't have a place to escape, it can cause it to push gaskets out, uh, increase the chances of oil leaks and so on and so forth. Um, so Harley-Davidson has a breather system in it that, that routes up through the rocker boxes, through the heads, and it comes back out here in the intake. You'll notice that these bolts here are hollow. So that path goes right back in through here into the head, then up into here, and you can see there's a port down in there as well. And that's where this sits. And if you guys have ever seen oil dripping from your air cleaner assembly, this is why, because sometimes there's an oil vapor that comes out with that pressure. And the whole purpose of it coming to the air cleaners because the EPA, they want clean burning machines. It's supposed to recycle most of that stuff, basically recirculate it right back into the throttle body so that it can be reburnt through exhaust gases and minimize pollution. However, on some motorcycles, the blow-by gets so excessive that you get a lot of oil there. Or if you're trying to run a Harley at really high RPMs for long periods of time, like we're running 80, 90, 100 mile an hour down the interstate, regardless of how good your system works, you're gonna push a little bit more vapor there and you're gonna see that drip at the bottom of the air cleaner. Now the purpose of these little pieces here, I call them umbrella seals, and it's not really technically the term for it, I believe, but they look kind of like little umbrellas, so that's what I do. They're basically a check valve. Um, it's designed so that air coming out can push past them, but no air sucking back in can get in because you don't want to draw any unfiltered or dirty air back into the system. Um, and it also helps kind of minimize how much oil vapor that is in that air reaches the air cleaner assembly. So on this job, it wasn't necessarily um, in required, I should say, for me to replace those seals, but they came with the kit. So I might as well, I've got it open. And the ones in here could very well be the original pieces. Uh, they do feel a little firmer than the new ones that are in the package. So while I've got it open, I'm just gonna replace them. The customer already paid for the gasket kit. So they're his seals. It takes me almost no time whatsoever to swap them out real quick. So we're just gonna do that. Hey guys, that was really simple. So the green ones are now in there. These, you literally just grab them and pull them out. And then when you go to put the new ones in, just make sure there's a tiny bit of oil on the, uh, the little pin on the back side of it so that it slides in and pops into place. Okay guys, as we're doing the final assembly on this rocker box cover, I wanna show you another update in the gaskets. You'll see here in my hand that there are, well, three, let me change camera angle. Three on. different washers. Now these are for the bolts that go in the top of the rocker box assembly. So there are two like plastic washers and what looks like a copper washer in the middle. And this has been updated. So the new gasket kit is actually coming with these that have the rubber all in one washer. So as I was going through and replacing those, I noticed what could be a potential problem. I don't know if you can see what that is, 
but that is aluminum thread that was on that bolt. I didn't notice it when I took it apart, but uh, so I don't know which hole that came out of, so we may have an issue with tightening one of these bolts up, which is not gonna be a good thing. Well guys, sure enough, I found it. This one right here, the one closest to the carburetor on the right side of the bike, it does not tighten. No effort whatsoever, it just spins. So the only way to fix it properly is to pull it all back apart and do a thread repair on that lower piece. So it's time to call the customer because that's gonna require more labor. And uh, I don't know for sure whether or not I even have the thread repair piece here, but I probably do. I keep a lot of that stuff in stock. Hi right, guys, sorry about that. Talent came in to talk to me. Apparently, customer's giving us a hot tub. Um, anyway, guys, when stuff like this happens, uh, that aluminum being on those threads, I know some people are going to be like, oh, you screwed it up. You can't strip a bolt by taking it out. The damage had to have been done going in. So either somebody cross-threaded it, which I don't think is the case because the bolt came out nice and easy. More than likely what happened is somebody over torqued that before. Maybe because it was leaking, they thought they needed to tighten it back down so they went back and snugged everything up. But um, yeah, it kind of sucks because like I said, now it's gonna require more work. I've already compressed that gasket. Hopefully we'll still be able to use it because we haven't started or run the bike yet. And uh, anyway, gotta call the customer, see what he wants to do. Well guys, remember a little while ago, we were mentioning about how some of the gaskets in this kit were different than the gaskets we've taken off. And I thought that maybe there were aftermarket gaskets in there. It turns out, I don't think they were. I uh, did a little bit of research on it, and it turns out these bikes had an issue with those gaskets failing on a regular basis. And that's why they uh, did an update. I say that, I mean Harley-Davidson. Harley-Davidson made an update and they improved the gasket system in here. So I believe that that's why everything was different. So when I was making the call to a uh, prison preacher to find out, or to find, yeah, to, to let him know about the strip bolt and that I was gonna have to put a little extra time into repairing this, because like I said, now I've got to take it all back apart again. Um, I also suggested to him, because we have all the gaskets, to go ahead and do the front cylinder as well. And no, I'm not gonna bore you with showing you that, because um, it's gonna be the exact same process, only easier, because once we remove that ignition coil, which is only held on by a couple bolts, um, there's a lot more room to work with here. The frame isn't so close to it, so all these covers just slide right out. We're here in the rear. There was a little finagling to get everything in there. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a hold of Prison Preacher. So, we're at a hold on doing anything else on this. And uh, like I said, anything else that I show you would be redundant. When we do get to the point of doing the thread repair, assuming he approves it, uh, I'll probably do a video on that because uh, thread pairs, one of those things is really not hard to do, uh, but some people don't understand how it actually works and how a thread insert will repair the threads. So maybe I'll do a video on that. But for now, we are done with this. We're gonna close this video and uh, move on to something different. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. And until the next time I see you, Keep those engines running. Luckily, we are currently experiencing a slight lull in the, uh, the terrible rain we've had for the uh, last day and a half or so. Not gonna last long. There's another squall coming. It looks like a considerable amount, but you can see down here by the creek, the levels are definitely up. Not dangerous by any means, but you can tell that we definitely got some rain.